Hello everyone, welcome to Scorcher Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of Bandai's High Metal R VE1 Elint Seeker toy. This toy was released in January 2018 for 9,000 yen and marks Bandai's ninth foray into the Valkyrie market of their High Metal R line. You might not be familiar with this vehicle, it was only shown for a few seconds in the movie Macross Do You Remember Love. Like the previous Valkyrie releases before it, it comes in a lovely Tengen decorated box. Inside the box you'll find chest cavity fillers, two sets of fixed posed hands, three display stand adapters, one obviously for each mode, clear canopy glass because you do have to swap that during transformation. You also get two pilot figures because the Lint Seeker is a rare two-seater in the Macross universe. The fast packs that are included are completely unique to the Lint Seeker because they are completely specific to electronic intelligence gathering. There's two backpack boosters, they have a reshaped front end to them and holes that receive the two antennae that are included. Two arm armors, which have been outfitted with unique electronic intelligence equipment, two leg armors that have boxes that have been added to them, again, presumably for intelligence gathering, and a big AWAC dome. In a separate tray, you get two sets of wings. There's the standard wings that go through each mode, or a set of Batroid-specific wings. There's intake fan detail and three landing gear. All of that stuff I'm going to look at a little bit closer in this review. Behind that tray you will of course find instructions. The toy comes packaged in Batroid mode and your first decision is what wings you want to put on it. These are the wings that go ahead and make it through all transformation. You can see that they've got a little bit of a uh, bump at the end of the winglet that is specific to the two-seater VF1s, the VE1 and the VT1. So a little bit of a different mold there. We can go ahead and pop these wings off and instead choose to use these little stubby Batroid mode specific wings and they attach just like they did on any other previous High Metal R that came with that option part and there you go. So that now is what it looks like with the stubby wings installed and this would be if you were using your VE1 as sort of a traditional Valkyrie. Now you could see there's a couple different things here that are different from a traditional VF1. You have no notch in the chest, just below the head here, like you do on this VF1S. And if we turn the toy to the side, you could see on the two-seater to toys or vehicles, they had smaller tail fins and they don't fold over. They just kind of pull forward like so. And then you had a longer flap on the back that comes up and covers that gap. Now, speaking of covering the gap, you do get with this toy the optional cover for the chest cavity here. So we can open that up, push this down, and then close that back up, bring that back down. And now we've concealed that gap in the back there. So you got that all pushed in, push that back down. So there you go. So that's an option part that comes with the VE1 that we've seen on some other high metal R's. Now the other thing you could see right away here, the different tone of gray, right? It's got a little blue hint to it on the VF1S and also the VF1J toy that came with the GVP. On the Elin Seeker, it's more of a hint of beige. So we can go through quickly the articulation of the underlying toy for those of you who are less initiated when it comes to the high metal R. You get a metal joint in the shoulder. There isn't a ton of metal in these toys. It is a ball joint, so you have a lot of flexibility here. Then underneath you have a twist point at the bicep, and you have a nice double jointed elbow that lets you get a pretty good range of articulation. The hand is a ball joint that has this little rubber hand that is uh, integrated for transformation. We can also pop these off and go ahead and install the optional hands just by popping onto the ball joint like so. 
If we move down, we have obviously our legs, which have huge range of motion. And if you're using the little smaller Batroid mode wings, you don't end up hitting the leg into that wing, which is great. Obviously we have our gear walk joint still, we have our knee. There is the ability to pivot out at the hips. And there's also an extension gimmick that lets you get further pivot at the hips, which is obviously good to see. Then moving down, we have a twist at the knee. Obviously that kneecap's getting out of the way. The feet, uh, pretty basic, forward, back. You can pull the, lay, the foot out further to get a little further range of motion. And you have the ability to twist that front toe. So very good articulation. It's gonna be a lot of fun to handle this toy. Uh, obviously pretty basic right now. Let's get the other hand on to make it look a little bit more symmetrical here. And then let's also throw on our AWAC piece. Okay, so here's how the AWAC, and again, I apologize if I'm ever using improper terminology here. This has an extension piece. We pull it out like so. And then we can go ahead and plug this in. Now I wanna get it the right way here. I wanna have it come out over the head and you can see there's just a little like toothy part here that's gonna slide right into that pretty small slot back there and just line it up and press it in. It's a pretty tight fit as you would kind of imagine and hope locks into place pretty nicely. Uh, and now you have kind of what is the more traditional Elint Seeker look. We've got the other fixed posed hand. Just gonna plug that on. And there you go. So I've got one open hand, one fist, whatever. They're, those are bigger hands. They look a lot better on the toy than those tiny integrated hands that it comes with. Although those integrated hands serve their function. Now, if you're curious how these toys stack up against Yamato V2s, here is one for size comparison. You could see much smaller toy, but visually uh, the HMRs do a great job. You can see there's also a little color differences here. Bandai went with a very dim yellow, much brighter yellow. Yamato went with a dark dish. Bandai went with a gray dish that's the same color as the body. Uh, now, both these toys do have a spinning dish. This is a very stiff dish, but it does spin. So there you go. So just some minor differences there. Let's turn these toys around so you can see if you are shopping, the Yamato V2, uh, obviously a little bit harder to come by uh, than the Bandai HMR, which has just been released and is very easy to come by. So there you go. So that's the toy without super parts on. Let's go ahead and load it up. The most iconic look of the Elint Seeker obviously involves the super parts that are included. Now you do get a backpack booster that looks like this has the gimmick where you can remove the armor panel that comes installed on the top, but that'll show off that armor detail there. And then you do have articulated boosters in the back. Now we can take this piece here and just kind of clip it on. Now there is a little peg in the center that goes into a slot on there. So you gotta get lined it and then just apply a little bit of pressure. You also have to get beyond that external booster there. So if you are going to show that off, uh, that's how you reconnect that panel. Now there, you'll notice there's a little hole right in the front here, and that receives this antenna here. Once that's in place, you can pivot it around either way. We're gonna bring it up like so, and then we're gonna turn our toy around and there's a slot right here on the backpack. We're just gonna bring these clips into that slot. Now I have found that this slot is a little bit narrower than it was on the regular VF1 releases, which means the boosters for the GBP accessory in combination with the lack of the notch on the chest means something like the GBB accessory is not going to work on the Elint Seeker. This piece here is a little trickier as it comes out of the box. You wanna connect this part here into the lower mount, and then this clips on to the top. So we're just gonna bring it on the top first, press down on the bottom. Uh, but then that's not the position it's supposed to be in for Batroid mode. So what we want to do is just swing it down and rotate that over. We can bring this piece out a little bit uh, as we do that. 
uh, and then there you go. So now you've got that piece on the side there. And then we take our backpack, or our, our leg back armors. Same thing as with the regular releases. There's a peg on the top, a peg on the bottom. That just fits into the back of the leg. You apply a little bit of pressure. Should hold into place pretty well. And there you go. Now you have a Batroid mode, super Elint Seeker in all of its glory. Now, obviously, uh, or maybe perhaps obviously, um, the Elint Seeker was never seen in Batroid mode in the movie. It's only in Do You Remember Love for a split second in fighter mode. So there's some weird line art out there. Here it is. The forearms are doing something a little bit funky here, but even so, you can see that the High Metal R is an excellent rendition of the Elin Seeker. Okay, so here are all the parts on the toy. You can see it looks pretty good. Everything attaches firmly. Nothing's going to pop off on you. Everything handling very well. This one arm here does have two pivots, one here and one here, and the ability to rotate on top, so you can get that really however you want to position it in Batroid mode. On the, other sand, uh, on the other side, there is this part here that pivots around too. So you have a couple different options on how you're going to display that. The toy doesn't come with a display stand. It does come with a Batroid display stand adapter. This is a Tamashi Stage Act 5 for mechanics display stand. They're available pretty cheap. All you have to do to install it on the display stand is kind of latch it in like so. And there you go. It, uh, nothing amazing, but it'll do the job holding it up for you. Okay, let's keep transforming the toy and take a look at gear walk mode. For those of you less familiar with the High Metal R line, it does not have opening canopy glass. So there is no ability to just hinge open the canopy. Uh, so instead, you get this removable piece that you swap with a heat shield as you transform the toy. And the Alin Seeker is similar enough to the other VF1 toys, where you could definitely check out my transformation guides, either from Fighter to Batroid or vice versa. The pilot figures are pretty cool. As the High Metal R line has progressed, we now get completely detached pilot figures. They're not already glued in the chair and they just fit right in. They have full feet, full bodies, everything. These are two of the same figure, essentially. Uh, I'm just gonna push down on there, kind of latch them into place. And then I'll take my canopy glass, smaller peg goes in the front, and pop that into place. And there you go. So now you can see two seat configuration Valkyrie. So that is pretty cool. Now, if we just turn the toy over, I have the intake fan detail on one side. To do that, you have to pop free that piece there, and then you are going to just tab in this little peg on the back of this piece here, peg that right in. So if you're not gonna load this thing up with super parts in gear walk mode, you might wanna go ahead and do something like that. Now, you might be wondering how is this different from a regular VF1 release? And so there you go. You can see totally different shape of the nose there with that two seat configuration. But really, that and the backpacks are the big differences. So let's zoom out here. And there you go. You can see backpack, very different. Nose, very different. But otherwise, still the same very good gear walk mode that you saw in other high metal R toys. And what really makes that work is the ability to hinge down these arms, which gives you clearance for the wings and the ability to do whatever you want with your arms from an articulation standpoint. Now, I've got the integrated hands back on the toy, uh, uh, still obviously very small. And if we wanted to go ahead now and install the AWAC dish, we would just find out which side. So here, you can see this has a top and a bottom to it. The peg is a little more towards the top of my, near my finger right now. And the slot is on the bottom. So we got to line that up. Once we do, we should just be able to apply a little bit of pressure and pop that into place. And now this has an extension gimmick. It's, it's extended right now for Batroid mode. So I'm gonna push it in all the way and now I have my Gearwalk Mode Elint Seeker 
without super parts. And you can see it's functioning just as well with that array on top as it did before. So high marks there. Really, gear walk mode for the high metal R toys, definitely a strong suit. And here we have the super parts on the toy. I've got the AWAC array in the extended position that gets you a little more clearance from your super parts, your boosters on the back here. Now there is some line art where it looks a little bit tighter and you certainly have the ability to collapse that like we saw without the super parts on. Uh, it, you have enough clearance to do that. The only other thing we've really done here is these little antenna array, they rotate because they're on round pegs. So in Batroid mode, they were kind of like this. Now they are like this. And that gets you into your gear walk position super parts. Now I do have the gear walk adapter on the toy. It's just a clasp that hooks up to the connector, the hip swing bar there. Uh, very easy, secure. Again, this Tamashi display stand though, sold separately. And uh, no real difference with the super parts on. It's not inhibiting any articulation or anything like that. So still a very positive experience. Let's continue on now to fighter mode. Here's the toy in fighter mode. And it does fighter mode very well, although it has the same problem that Bandai has had on several of their recent releases. And that is you get a display stand that only works when you're using the super parts. You can tab the little back tabs here into the arms but these front things are for going around the super parts and so it just won't latch in very well. So a little bit of a bummer if you intended on displaying your Elint Seeker just as a plain fighter mode, although I imagine that's not a ton of people. And what I'm doing here works out fair enough as long as you don't knock your counter too hard that you've got this display stand on. Now again, everything does latch together. You'll see there's very few gaps. Everything is solid, it handles very well, but there are some compromises that you need to know for high metal R toys, and that is primarily there are not integrated landing gear. Instead, what you need to do is pop open a few different compartments. So there's this compartment in the front, and then there's this compartment in the back, and then you need to find your landing gear that look like this. They just plug right into position. You wanna put enough pressure on there to make sure you know you have it in place. Take your landing gear for the back. And again, just pressure straight in. And if you find your landing gear is popping off on you, that means you probably didn't seat it all the way in. Once we've got them seated, they should stay on. And you can see this is what the toy looks like. So no spinning wheels, no movable tow bar in the front but everything looks pretty good. So at least you got that going for you. If you wanted to, without the super parts on, use the AWAC dish, you're just going to free up your backpack, which a little easier said than done because everything does come together so tightly. All right, so once we get this freed up, just pulling out, we're gonna flip it over the top and then flip this panel down in the back and just like we did before, now I've got this extended, like I'm gonna have the super parts on there. When I don't use the super parts again, I like to tighten it up a little bit and just plug this piece right in. Let's see, there it goes. And now you have your non-super atmospheric AWAC forma formation for your Elin Seeker. So it looks pretty good. And again, you can rotate this dish around however you like. And there you go. So let's go ahead and throw the super parts on and see how that looks. All right, so I've got the toy sitting on its landing gear now and you can see the bottom uh, sensor array does fold over and tuck in and creates plenty of ground clearance, which is really cool. Now one little note on uh, the backpack here, there's a mound on the either side of the back right here and it looks like the way it's supposed to work is that those vertical stabilizers just tuck in right, right beside that mound. Uh, then you got this big flap in the front and it looks like it's actually supposed to rest on the back of the vertical stabilizers. And so if it could do that, you would have this like gap right behind the canopy here. Uh, it doesn't really function that way on this toy or pretty much any toy I've ever seen. So what instead can happen is that this flap just goes all the way closed. And I think, you know, this is a space vehicle, so aerodynamics don't really matter. But to me, it just seems to make more sense that that flap would come all the way over anyways. But again, depends on the line art. And the same thing is true of the extension of the AWAC. 
uh, looks good a little higher above with the super parts on gets that little room with the boosters but there is definitely some line art and i will have line art up on uh, the any moon site that shows you that they've got this awag dish right on top of the boosters and the line art so uh, again maybe a subjective thing in both parts maybe you like the vertical stabilizers out a little further so it tucks in a little bit lower it changes the geometry of the boosters but not to such an extent where it really matters so things to consider as you display this toy okay we've got the super parts on we've got them fully deployed and this is one beautiful bird i imagine this is how 90 percent of people who buy this toy are going to want to display it which makes it that much more of a shame it doesn't come with one of those tamashi display stands seems like such a cheap accessory that they keep failing to throw in the box obviously trying to drive you to buy the three pack which at this point in your high metal r collection might be big enough where that actually makes a lot of sense for you so other than the lack of a display stand being included if this is an attractive looking vehicle to you in any respect then you should go out and buy it now while it's plentiful and cheap elin seekers have a history of keeping their value pretty well and becoming scarce and hard to find so if you like it at all go grab one uh, there's nothing here from that that would make me not recommend it to you other than those people who find this to be a hideous design and, and that's completely fair if you're in that group there are plenty of other toys out there that you should consider instead of this one i am a big fan so i am highly recommending it check out my full article on anymoon.com and as always thanks for watching